Okay, so I'm going to start by coming in underneath the tip of that last stitch. And I'm just leaving my tail here for now. And then following down that same channel in between. Actually in the center of a knit stitch, I'm going past a bar and then back. And past the next bar and back. And pass to the next bar and back. Now, if you happen to have one of these that is right over a raglan seam as it's going down, you can eyeball, so you might have to jog a little bit sideways. And that's fine. And I'm not pulling these crazy tight. I do want the to just to kind of remain in this little zigzaggy thing because I will show you what the next step is after that. And you notice I'm holding the yarn doubled because we want really good thickness on the stems. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So that's step one. Don't cut your yarn. Okay, so now we're going to fill the stem stitch on the way back, and that's just by looping under each of these. And when I pull this, it'll tighten up that last stitch just a little bit, and then stretch the fabric out, and repeat with the next stuff. Sorry if I'm coming in and out of focus, and huge thanks to Chris, who is being my human tripod right now. Thanks, honey. Okay, and then when you take these back in, kind of want to dip back right into the center of this stitch. I'm just going to pull that through. Imagine this is the wrong side, I just don't want to flip it around. So that one goes in and then this one will also come across. And I'll probably, with the second piece, tuck it around and go in that side just so it looks a little bit more filled through there. Cool, hey? Okay. Okay, so we're going to start in the center. This is where we're using the contrast yarn number two to make the center spine. So if you come to where that first two lines of your main color join, and the stitch above that, kind of spread that out, underneath you'll see the stitches that were joined in there, and now I'm just coming up through the bump of those two stitches. That's my starting point. Leaving a tail that I will weave into the wrong side later. And now I'm trying to just find only the, the background. I don't want to come up underneath both of them, so just grabbing the background, the bump of the background, center spine stitch. And this is just going to be a little bit trickier than doing the initial tail because the initial tail wasn't through any of the color work section and it didn't have any decreases in it. So that was your practice. This is your harder version. As you're coming up in towards the next decrease, use your needle tip to just keep on spreading things out. So right now I'm still aiming for that middle stitch and its bar. And you can try different methods for this next part, but whatever you find best is cool. What I've been doing is dipping under the right hand stitch, that's the one that's on top. I've been snagging through the left hand stitch and then coming back out the right hand stitch. So that kind of gives me a center bar in the middle of that double decrease. I'm just working on the tension there so it's lying fairly fat. It's okay if some are a little bit longer and some are shorter. This next stitch for me 
has always been a longer one. It's okay. Yours might be a little bit tighter. I also haven't blocked this yet, so the stitches are all looking fairly loose at the moment, but that will improve once I go through the blocking. Mm -hmm. And you carry on. So it'll be the same thing as I'm coming up to the next join, is making sure that I get the pearl bump right up behind it. Oh, and by the way, if this happens, that's okay because that's going to be covered up when we come back up and stuff the stem stitch. Okay, so here's that one that I'm kind of digging in to find the center bar. And I'll show you this next part one more time the way I do it. So I find the cross stitch on top, dip under the second one, oh, and sweep back into the first one. And I just realized that earlier I was talking about using the yarn double. No, that's just my project because I wanted to get this done really quickly and it's knit in bulky wool made by holding a couple strands of Cascade 220 together. So ignore the comments, ignore the fact that I'm using doubled yarn. You do not need to be using doubled yarn. You can use just the yarn specified in the pattern. I will say that giant yarn also makes this easier to see. Okay, so carry on with that and you're going to keep on going until you are two stitches past the bottom of your original stem stitch in the uh, feather color. And then I'll come and show you the stuffing. Okay. okay, so here we are at the base of the feather quill and we're two stitches longer than the original feather's stem was. And now we're just going to go looping through to stuff the inside. Um, and just a side note, if you loop the opposite way, these <coughs> won't sit nicely at all. They will kind of come apart. So try and do make it so that you're going in at the same angle angle and then come back and angle and come back that your original stitches were. And it's going to be a little bit bumpier underneath as you're coming over all those places with the double decreases, but you're still just working through your contrast color and not dipping into the base at all. Oh, and here's that part where I'm coming over the uh, background yarn that was twisted and started showing through. And so the stuffing actually hides that completely so you don't wind up with any breaks, and it's fine. There we go. Back up at the top, and I'm just going to poke this through there to the wrong side, and then I will come through and do the same thing with my final tail. And that'll be your feather embroidery all done.